Hello everyone, Ember here and welcome back to a new video. Usually I would quite like to take an in-depth look at a deck profile, but honestly for this video I kind of want to keep this as brief as possible because the match that I want to use for this video is very long, I think it's nearly half an hour long or something daft, but it's a crazy game, very very tense, you know if you don't want to sit through all of it that's fine, just like skip near the end, but a very, very fun match that I enjoyed playing with this deck. And it really just demonstrates the kind of power that Gouging Fire has in Standard. And honestly, why I think this card is pretty underrated. Now, I'm not saying it's broken, you know, I don't want to go down the clickbait route of saying, oh, this card's busted, everyone's sleeping on it, and all the rest of it. But truth be told, there's a lot of potential within this card. And, you know, I'll go over why, you know, it's not brilliant. What I will say, you know, if, if you want the cons out of the way first, so to speak, what I will say is that stuff like Charizard EX, right, for example, you know, because that's a big deck on the ladder, right? Charizard is very difficult to beat with this deck because Charizard's big. It's a big Pokemon. This deck wants to play against Pokemon. It can want to kill. And 260 is a lot of damage to be tossing out. 270 with Brute Bonnet. But we also have, you know, the choice, what's it called? Choice Belt to do plus 30 versus V-Stars and regular Vs. So we can actually want to kill V-Stars with these guys, which is terrifying. And I'm also playing Maximum Belt in this particular list. I would like to play Prime Catcher, but I I just wanted to experiment with Maximum Belt, you know? I just want to try out, like, Stage 1 EX, getting KOs against them. But there is also, like, several Stage 2 EX Pokemon that have 310 HP that are kind of running around. You know, God of War has kind of seen a little bit of play lately for some reason. thought God of War was dead, but, you know, apparently not. So, yeah, 310 damage with a Maximum Belt, quite devastating. But, of course, you could use Prime Catcher if you really wanted to. Also, just any A spec really works in this deck that's not like Neo Upper Energy or, you know, one of the reboot pods or something. You could even play Drum of Awakening, but then again, you're only playing three ancient Pokemon. Well, four if you end up using Brute Bonnet. So, you know, do kind of bear that in mind if you're trying to play this on more of a budget. Master Ball certainly wouldn't hurt this deck because, yeah, you definitely want some decent Pokemon search. But yeah, that's like the main premise of this deck. Two Fire and Genicolas, Blaze Blitz does 260. And you can't use it again until it leaves the active spot. So we have to play switching cards. Now, I don't, funnily enough, play very many switching cards in this deck. I wanted space for other stuff. So I actually just play three copies of switch card. This also means our opponent can boss be barrel and store with it if they want to. However, most players assume that because you're playing Gouging Fire, aka a Pokemon that has to switch in order to attack again, they don't really boss be barrel because they kind of know, or assume at least, that you play a lot of switching cards, and it just so happens that I personally don't. There's also a reason, by the way, why you should probably play like Prime Catcher in this deck. But yeah, just something very quick to bear in mind. I'm trying to like flash through this deck, but also one copy of Mela. I will say this: Mela has been a godsend in some games. Like Mela's just a really good card for some reason. I don't know why, but this card is straight up better than Sada in some situations. There are times where I've had two or three energy on nearly all of my gouging fires in play. And setting up another one isn't necessary, but getting a bigger hand size is. And sometimes Mela is just better for Sada in terms of draw power. So I do like Mela. You could also use Mela to power up Chiyu, which is a very nice single prize attacker that we're playing in the list. So yeah, quite nice. Mega Fire of Envy can be quite decent. So cool Pokemon card overall. And we also have Moltres, which the game is frozen. Has the game frozen? Yeah, it's frozen. Yep, game crashed. All right, so I don't actually hate this hand too much. At least we can get Bibao going next turn, but we do run the risk of not being able to find Sada, but I think that's kind of like our only concern with this hand right now. We do at least have a way of removing Zorok next turn if we get lucky enough, so I'm fairly optimistic that this will go well. I mean, Luminion ideally would have been a bit nicer here, but I think we just have to go for... Ultra Ball Bidoof. And we do have the Choice Belt, which I guess that will make a difference, actually. I'm just going to assume for the time being that they don't have any uh, tool removal. They don't play the Lost Vacuum. Maximum Belt, sadly, not going to do anything in this matchup. So, yeah, probably Maximum Belt could definitely be cut for Prime Catcher. I probably said that in the deck profile, but yeah, Maximum Belt. It's it's good in against certain decks, you know, but for the most part, Prime Catcher definitely feels a lot stronger, especially when, you know, the main attack, I forget its name all the time, what's it called? Blaze Blitz. 
you know, prevents you from actually attacking next turn if you don't play a Prime Capture or a Switching card, which is quite annoying. And of course, Escape Rope had to go and rotate, so yeah, frustrating. But to be honest, Escape Rope does help your opponent out quite a bit in a lot of situations, so I'm not missing it too much, I must say. However, they are playing a Lavatar down, so that's interesting. So what is this, Tyranitar Zorg? What's the synergy here? Is Well, I guess, yeah, I guess Tyranitar has, like, um, a synergy with the Gengar. But yeah, interesting. So you will use Void Return, probably feed me the Lavatar, I'd imagine. Although we can't actually KO it with our first attack, which is pretty annoying, admittedly. We can KO the Bidoof, though, with a Heat Blast. And they don't switch out, which is fine by me. Okay, Raiding Greninja, that's actually pretty good. So we cannot use Max and Belt on Tyranitar, but I don't think we're doing enough damage anyway, because Tyranitar is like an absolute chonker lad, so, you know, he's a big boy. We won't be able to KO him. I probably should just put the Belt down, actually. I don't know why I didn't think to do that. Ooh, that's a bit awkward. I'm not sure I'm a fan of this. Um, Nest Ball. Nest Ball, go get Gouging Fire. Right, Perfection would be Radiant Greninja into Sada. Yeah, Radiant Greninja into Sada. That would just be perfect. That's not Radiant Greninja into Sada. Okay, fair enough. Right. What am I doing then? Because I've got a nasty feeling this is going to get KO'd. Probably, yeah. I think, although we could have like a Sacrificial Lamb, I guess, for a Pokemon. So it's Nest Ball for Chiyu. This is what we're doing. Well, Nest Ball for Chiyu. I could get Moltres. That's tempting. Well, no, because Chiyu's... Yeah, Chiyu has more utility, I think, because we might not just get Basin. I will Maximum Belt the other gouging fire i will switch in cart into chiyu and then i will research so yeah whiffing there the because like ideally i would have got like the solder off and then found another basic energy and gone for the ko on this zorok which would have been fantastic but sadly we didn't get it and okay of course but we do get some other stuff. Can't use the capsules, sadly. Can't use Turbo Energize unless we get an energy off this. Um, Yes, I will keep the boss, just in case. We do get a Mellow, which is actually quite nice. Does mean we can actually attack next turn if we really want to. So I will Magma Basin. And sadly, we whiffed an energy, so... RIPS, I guess, but I could split the energy up, but I think we just have to kind of like press on at this point. I think we've given our opponent enough time. So if they care us, they care us, right? It's it's just one of those things. And no point in wasting TM Turbo Energize in case we get to use it later on. But yeah, a very long turn on my part. I was hoping to get at least a Sada or an energy. Sadly, we didn't see either. So that's one of those arguments where you could make. Perhaps, like, Pokegear could be really good in this deck. You know, thin out some of the tools, maybe. Go for Pokegears, try and guarantee Sada more. Because Luminion is honestly just a wee bit of a liability these days. <laughs> you know, if It sounds so strange, because, like, do you all remember when, like, Tapu Lele was really, really good? I know Tapu Lele had a great first attack. But the thing is, Luminion is basically the exact same card, more or less. I know it can't really attack, but Luminion just doesn't feel great in this in this format for some reason like it's just it's hard to put my finger on it but you know i guess when you have these like big tanky pokemon it kind of you know feels bad to have the rest of them but at the very least they aren't actually doing any damage right now like they do actually have to they do actually have to get into the game themselves in many ways i would much rather they ko chi yu here if i'm being honest just so we can use Mela. But at the same time, Mela doesn't exactly help us with the next Gouging Fire. Okay, so they are playing Luminous Energy. That's cool. So that probably means they have the Dark-type Tyranitar, 
which is quite scary actually because that does 240 i think does it do 240 i can't remember actually it's been a while since i've looked at that card it's the one that can um do route which is quite a good attack but then it also has like the mountain king or something for two dark energy i forget what it does though I know it has like a really annoying downside where you have to like mill the top four cards of your own deck or something daft. It's, it's a weird card, man. They really stuffed stage twos over, didn't they? But uh, either way, Assyrian Zarg, did any Gengars hit the discard pile? One did. Okay. So they can do 50 damage this turn. This is why I don't like playing Zarg, right? It's just a wee bit slow, be a wee bit clunky. I think the Dodrio build's probably better, but this is clearly, you know. A match of the rogue decks we've got out here. I'm quite I'm quite enthralled by this because you know recently it's been like a lot of Snorlax, Chen Pao, stuff we've seen before. It's pretty boring. They do play a boss. That's annoying. It's very annoying actually. So what will they hit into? Probably be barrel if I had to imagine. Yeah. Honestly, if this is another player that goes for the whole, yeah, I'm not going to play the game until you can kind of thing, that's going to be so annoying to deal with as well. Honestly, I'm getting real tired of this be barrel shenanigans, you know? <laughs> it's really annoying. So yeah, they're just going to be an absolute pain. And honestly, I'm pretty tempted to just say, yeah, I think I'm just going to use TM Turbo Energize. I'll put an energy down... Do I want to do that? Question mark. Hmm. I don't want to do Chi Yu. It's a good point, actually. I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter in the long run, because we're using Energize anyway. So yeah. I shall do this. Can't do anything else. I could boss them and try and be equally annoying, but realistically well that doesn't sound like a bad idea actually just boss this force them to have the switch <laughs> this game's gonna go on forever if i do that though oh um do i want to do that Nah. no nah, i think we're cool i won't boss them maybe that was a mistake not doing it but i think we'll be fine i think we'll be fine we won't be fine if they have boss and the way to KO this, but I think we'll be fine otherwise. Uh, do I want to do that? Question mark. I usually like to split my energy up quite a bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll just attach there. This game is already going on for way longer than I kind of wanted it to, but to be honest. Like, I didn't think we'd get the win immediately, but also these turns between us are very long, so I don't want to be here forever. You know, I'd rather play another game than deck out and have a close game, if that makes sense. My time is limited. I don't have unlimited free time in life, but, you know, as much as I want to. But even then, even if I had, like, free time, I don't know, unlimited free time, rather, I don't know if I'd actually play this game, like, all day like I used to. Like, with TCGO, I used to be able to play this game for, like, seven hours at a time. But with TCG Live, it's a whole different story. You know, it's just... It's just so different on so many levels, but yeah, bit of a depressing topic, I guess, but you know. Assyrian Zorok is doing a whopping 50 damage. Wow, cool. Okay, damage pump. That that changes things. Although I think damage pump moves from up to two damage from one to another, so they can't necessarily or is it just any way you like? Oh, it is any way you like. Okay, I should know this. I played Odorio. But yeah, damage pump, okay. So now they can do 150, which is a wee bit annoying. That was interesting. Why would you do that? Why would you do that knowing I can do 260? That's interesting. Maybe they have like another damage pump. They have another Gengar though. They didn't play boss though. They did play research, which is quite scary because... They have one boss in the down and down in the discard pile. They probably play at least two to three copies, I'd imagine, because Isuin Zorak just has to try and like take care of whenever it can. There's no rare candy Tyranitar just yet, which, you know, thank goodness. We might have to boss around Tyranitar actually. Okay, KO Barrel. Thank you, Barrel. You've been a great service. 
but I need to get rid of this Zorok and, you know, play the game. So we can do that. We can Mela to this Gouging Fire, which is good. Nest Ball, do we need to do that? I don't think we do, actually. I shall Nest Ball. I guess I don't have to nest ball, but I can thin the hand thin sorry, thin the hand down a little bit and do we ever need this guy? Is the big question. I don't think we do. I mean, I think my opponent won't will have to like Well we'll just boss Laminion oh that doesn't matter anyway. I'm just gonna play Gouging Fire. I'm just gonna hope that I can find, you know, other Pokemon to attack with. I mean, yeah, this is a bit risky doing this, but at the same time, you know, I don't, I don't mind really. Capsule, where am I putting capsule? I'm out of tools actually, so I can put this anywhere I want. Put it on the frog, I guess. Mela, please. Mela, be good. Um, yeah, this guy. See, this is why you play Mela, by the way. It's a good card. And we don't really get anything. See, there's no Sada. Where's Sada? I played four copies of that character. Never mind. Can I play Basin? Oh, did I... Wait, did I already play Basin? Or did I... Oh, wait! I know what's happened. I don't have any energy. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, we'll just have to find an energy next turn. Which I'm sure we will, so it doesn't matter. Right, Blaze Blitz. This is why you play the choice belt. Got some prize cards. Yum. Two prizes. We're down to 17 minutes on the timer and we've only taken two prizes. Oh, I love this game. I don't know how people grind for like hours playing this game. I really don't. They must be getting quick concedes or something from players, but I don't know. I swear like LDF or somebody has like a side hustle of just playing Charizard <laughs> non-stop when, you know, they're not playing rogue decks just so they can kind of keep up, but... Okay, Iono, yeah, that kind of sucks. It, them carrying Gouging Fire this turn would have freed up a bench space. So we could have played Luminion for Sada, but it looks like we get Sada anyway. We do also get Moltres, which is quite cool. Yep, didn't see that coming. So we have, we do have like more Basin in deck, so we do like win the Stadium Wars anyway. Earthen Vessel is quite good, but I actually don't think we have a lot of energy left. I mean, we've not discarded any, but... Three, four, five, six, play ten. So there's what, three more in deck, assuming on a prized? So unless I've prized all three energy, then this Earthen Vessel is worth it, which is cool. So, yeah. I'm guessing they want to just... You see, if I had a Prime Capture in sand, like I know Prime Capture is a one-off, but if I had had Prime Capture, in theory... I could have been able to, you know, use um, Gouging Fire to KO Zorak and basically win the game at that point, but we'll see. This thing scares me, though. Like, I'm not sure how to deal with Tyranitar realistically. Like, this deck doesn't like playing against Pokemon it can't want to KO, basically. That's, like, my biggest gripe with the deck, but... Okay, that's... Also quite scary. Whatever that is. It's not loading in. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Pivotar. I forgot. So I'm guessing they're just going to feed us a Gengar and assume we can't do anything about it. Which is fair enough. Because technically we can't. Until we've shifted Gouging Fire. And we are down a switch card? Question mark. Yeah. We are down a switching card. So we only have two switches left. So I don't actually play a lot of switching cards in this deck. But... Typically, you know, your opponent just KOs your Gouging Fire anyway in retaliation. So I play the Switch anyway. That's fine. Really? Really? You're coming at me with the Pupitar? The Crashing Bullet? It's interesting. I mean, that kind of helps me as well because... It means that I can KO these guys, but, you know. Okay, what we've got to do is, first of all, Earthen Vessel. Let's put some energy in the bin so we can actually use stuff like Basin again. 
Okay, so take the last two energy out, that's fine. So we've got Arvin switch. So we've got Arvin and two cards, basically. That's fine. So what we can do is, this is tricky because if I play Greninja, I can't play the manual, actually. If I do that play, if I want a Kindler. And I don't need to Sada. No, that's tricky. Actually, I don't need to Sada this turn. I can wait. I'm patient. I can wait. Scarred energy. Yeah, I mean, that's that is what it is, kind of thing. Boss. Luminion might be pretty big, but I think we just lose anyway if we put Luminion in place, so I'm alright with doing this. So, unfortunately, we can't really shift it. That's like my only concern now. But at the same time, we have stuffs in play. We could switch and take a KO. In fact, is there ever, ever a world where we do that? In fact, I might just do this. Yeah, I might just do this. Bonk. So that's only to one of my Pokemon, that's fine. So we put energy here. Yeah, that's correct. Energy here. And then all we need to do now is Flare Bringer. And there should be at least three energy in the Disco Piles, there's four, that's cool. So we do this. Yay, okay, no problems. And if he decides to use this thing again, well, we just retreat, and we hope he doesn't have a boss or anything like that. But we're still not in a terrible position. We have two Gouging Fires set up. We have one in the future coming up. He does evolve into our Tyranitar, which is a bit scary. And that does mean he can use Lightning Rampage, which, again, is quite scary. He has 330 HP left. This thing is tossing out 310, I want to say. Yeah, 310. So we don't actually get there, which is annoying. So it's boss. It's boss time. I do think we're down a boss, though, are we? No. There's one in the left index somewhere. So is that the game plan? Boss, boss. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Because I think if we have to take care of this, we just lose. Because this one, it kills us anyway. So yeah. So I guess this is what they were setting up in the long run, was trying to tar just like being this massive Pokemon that we can't really deal with. Which, truth be told, we can't really deal with it. <laughs> you know, like, I could, in theory, try and get Brute Bonnet back, but I don't actually think I have any uh, whatchamacallits, so... Yeah. But this is fine, you know. This is fine, he says. His house burning. Okay, that's nice. Get a basin. I mean, I really don't think we need this guy, but I'll just put it in play in case we do. I will use Sada, he says, nearly forgetting what his original plan was. I will boss. We will take out the one with energy. And yeah, it's kind of just a case of, can we find a boss next turn sort of thing, I guess. Or like, not really, but, well, yeah. Yeah? It's a question mark? Yeah. No, it depends, really, but yeah, we'll see. We'll base in this. So, unfortunately, I did discard a B-Barrel earlier with the, uh, what you call it, so... We might not be able to find a boss, of course. You know, that's uh, that's going to be the question of the day, but we'll see. We'll have to see if we can find boss or be barrel or either one of them. Okay, that doesn't help me in the slightest. What would help me is... Wait, no, I discarded the minion, didn't I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. 
Wait, I didn't? I thought I did. I could have sworn that I... Oh, wait, because Kindler doesn't discard the other cards. It just shuffles them back in. Oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I thought for some reason Kindler discarded the other cards. Okay. Yeah, to be fair, that would be a terrible card if it did. But yeah, so there is a Luminion in deck as well. So if we, if we can get Ultra Ball, we can also try and find Boss. But yeah, we kind of just like... Yeah, we actually lose without Boss as well. Also, if he completely heals Zorak, we also just lose, which is a bit sad, but... Yeah, he has to completely heal Zorak this turn. I guess I didn't think of that. That was a bit short-sighted of me. Maybe I should have hit into Tyranitar, but I think we left it too late to deal with this guy. Like, we should have KO'd, um... We should have focused on KOing Pupitar with Moltres. That should have been our plan. But for some reason, I just really didn't think about doing that. So, yeah, it kind of comes down to if he can heal his Zorak this turn, then we've lost. Or, you know, we do actually have to find at least a barrel next turn, if not more. So, yeah, this went south for us. <laughs> but, you know, it's still been a fun game. I've still enjoyed it quite a bit. It's entertaining to see these decks play out. And gives me hope for Zorak, maybe, and Tyranitar. But, you know, I shall have to revisit this guy at some point. But, yeah. You can probably tell by my voice that I've lost faith in uh, in beating this deck, but we'll see. Energy retrieval, okay. It's still winnable, you know? It's still possible. We just gotta believe in the heart of the cards. But yeah, there is a B-Barrel, I think, and there is a Luminion still in deck, so... It's not impossible, right? How many Ultra Ball are we down? We're down one Ultra Ball. Yeah, this definitely feels possible. We just have to, like, actually draw a card that's usable. <laughs> you know, how many times have we asked TCG Live to give us a usable card and it's not done it? But, okay, usable card, please. Usable card. Just has to be usable. That's not strictly usable, but we'll see. Please be something I can use. Please. Please don't crash either. Oh, come on, please. Please don't do this to me. Please. Please, it's like the last turn of the game. Don't crash. Um, yes. Put the shoes in hand. Send one more card. Come on, shoes. Shoes for the win. We don't get it. Oh, that's annoying. Wait, one more card? It's another shoes! Okay, come on, shoes. Shoes for the win. Wait, come on, shoes. Shoes for boss. That's Ultra Ball. So the next question is, did we prize the last boss? God, I hate the tension. Like, where, where is boss? Uh, let's guard these, because we lose anyway. Where is boss? Come on. Show me it. It's there. It's there. It is there. Okay, great. Fantastic. After all that. After all that. I'm probably going to miss sequence and something horrible, but... Yes, I would like to Luminous Sign. Thank you. Wow. Well, hopefully the connection doesn't cut out the last minute, but... Yes, okay, Gape Draw Bog, take two damage counters. So yeah, their own Pupitar was their undoing, because they damaged the Zorok, but yeah. It's crazy. Crazy game. Very close. Retreat cost. Go up to Gouging Fire. And 260. Thank goodness. Alright. Heart of the cards, people. Heart of the cards. Trekking Shoes into Trekking Shoes into discard research, into tracking shoes, into Ultra Ball to get Luminion for boss. That's ridiculous. We did prize an energy as well. Crikey. And we did prize Asada. Oh, crikey. Thank you for watching. Spinama Power.